Hello, there is 8 p.m. in Banjo. This is the news for the headlines. His Excellency President Baru holds talks with Senegalese Foreign Minister in Banjo. More damning revelations regarding cash requests amounting to hundreds of millions of dollars dominate Tuesday's proceedings of the Jani Commission. Little known Medina FC wins its first title in Lamen Nawetan after more than a decade of near misses. And Liberian President Ellen Johnson sir, leave urges her people to vote peacefully in Tuesday's general elections. Well, these and other stories coming ahead in the next hour. I am Fatou Jassi. Thank you for joining us. The recent change of government in the Gambia did not only usher in hope and freedom for Gambians, but also solidified the formerly fragile relations between Dakar and Banjo. The arrival of the Senegalese foreign minister to the Gambia is a testimony to the improving ties between the two sisterly states. Foreign Minister Sidiki Kaba was received at the Banjul International Airport by his Gambian counterpart, Honorable Usenu Dabo. Meanwhile, Foreign Affairs Minister Sidiki Kaba held talks with President Adama Barrow. Mr. Kaba is in the country as a special envoy of President Macky Sall and will discuss strengthening bilateral relations between the two countries. Momodi Jala reports. Mr. Kaba, who arrived this morning at the start of a tour of West Africa, was received by the Gambia's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Usenu Dabo. After his arrival, Mr. Kaba met President Barrow at his office in Fajara, and had lengthy discussions on bilateral issues. Mr. Kaba said he is in the Gambia as a special envoy of President Macky Sall, who is keen to nurture the bilateral and fraternal relations between the Gambia and Senegal. C'est une visite d'amitié dans deux pays frères, deux peuples frères. It is a friendly visit to my brother, the two brotherly people. I'm here to deliver a message from the President of the Republic of Senegal, Macky Sall, to his friend and brother, Adam Abaro, to strengthen the relationship. That is why I came with this high-power delegation. I thank my colleague, Minister Dabo, for the warm welcome and for meeting the President. He said that the two people share a common history and destiny, and as such, are bound to live together whatever the circumstance. Mr. Kaba also said that the visit allowed him to discuss the security situation in the two countries, as any potential threat will likely destabilize both countries, whilst emphasizing the need to work together to consolidate the situation. Les échanges ont porté sur la coopération économique. We discussed areas of cooperation, including economic, commercial, as well as strengthening military cooperation and security. Because there cannot be any meaningful development without security. It is only through security that we can attain development, good governance, and democracy. La paix, l'état de droit, et la démocratie. He commended President Barrow for his commitment to democracy and national reconciliation, saying Senegal is committed to helping the Gambia attain peace and development. He will later have talks with his Gambian counterpart, Usainu Dabo, at the Foreign Ministry. Mumuri Jalo. GRTS. Now over $350 million is said to have been requested by former Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service in Jogoba from the Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation on behalf of former President Yahya Jame. This was the latest testimony at the Commission of Enquiry Tax to look into the financial dealings of Jame. Fatou Matacham has details in this report. His latest arrival at the Commission of Enquiry as former Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service was centered on the $148 million loan from the Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation for the purchase of state aircraft. At this time, Social Security was already, you were Office of the President, government through the Office of the President, as you might can say government. We are already owing Social Security a great deal of money and they were in the red, as you yourself noted. What was the thinking? Can you explain to the Commission why 
another 148 million 500,000 would be required of social security. I cannot uh, say that was what you know what his thinking were why you know uh, we have to have an, um, a state aircraft, but it was something that you know he ne he needed he wanted you know for the state. He had this impression or this belief, you know, that he can always, you know, go back to social security and um, um, request for, for funds for a loan, and, you know, which um, was really difficult. Financial transactions involving the national estate giant also involved over $190 million for the purchase of fire engines and compensation to the families of Ghanaian nationals allegedly killed in the Gambia. What was the purpose of this money? Um, I later found out that um, it was meant for the um, Ghanaian government. The 500,000? Yes. We are listening, Mr. Ba. Right. For what purpose? Later I, um, I found out that it was um, probably about those um, Ghanaian citizens that were um, that lost their lives here in the Gambia. Tony Gattas, managing director of AfriStar, reappeared before the commission to present his 2012 to 2016 audited financial accounts before members of the commission. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Fatumata Cham Jamme. You can watch highlights of today's sittings tonight shortly after this newscast. Meanwhile, the Minister of Foreign Affairs wishes to clarify a claim made by businessman Mohamed Bazi to the Commission of Inquiry that he is the Honorary Consul General of the Republic of the Gambia to Lebanon. A media release from the Foreign Ministry says that His Excellency President Adam Abaro on April 10, 2017 withdrew the appointment of Mr. Mohamed Bazi and appointed Mr. Khalid A. Hamoud as the Honorary Consul General of the Republic of the Gambia to Lebanon. Now the Minister of the Interior, Mai Ahmed Fati, reveals that plans are on the way for the issuing of national identity cards by November. Minister Fati made the remarks during an interview with GRTS. He has an excerpt. As you know, the Gambia refugees, we have uh, other refugees. We have presently almost uh, 10,000 refugees in the Gambia. Um, the figures have gone down precisely to 7,000 and something um, over the past couple of months since this government came into existence after our registration. So we are contributing significantly towards the, the protection, the management um, of refugees um, around the world uh, with this kind of population on our ground. We have refugees who are fully integrated into Gambian society. Uh, they live among communities, uh, but notwithstanding, we know there are precise figures because we have a very comprehensive registration system. Uh, refugees are registered periodically. Uh, we have them profiled. We know where they live. Uh, we are working with UNSCR office in the Gambia and also the regional office in Dakar. We work with GAFNA. So protective assistance has been given by government. Uh, we grant them documentation so that they can move freely in our country. Uh, the children are going to school. Um, so we have all these services. Refugees in the Gambia live like Gambian citizens. As we speak, our brothers and sisters are currently in Libya and Italy mainly, sweating profusely for greener pastures, whilst others who have uh, failed to make it have uh, voluntarily returned back home. Um, what plans do you have to integrate them into society? Now, these citizens are back. The government is not resting on its laurels. The government is working with our international partners, with the European Union in particular, to make sure that migration can be properly managed and that it can also serve the development interests of the Gambia. The president believes and the government believes that the long-term long approach to migration should be you know, encouraging private sector growth in the Gambia establishing businesses and enterprises that will help to spur um, indigenous economic growth, enabling young people to have jobs. Can you tell us whether or not government is still issuing ID cards and passports? The ministry has concluded that it is time now 
with its, with, with its review completed, that we can move on to give the Gambian community, the Gambian citizens, a national identification system that they deserve. Cabinet has approved, and a process is now in place, hopefully, which will be completed in a not too long distant future, very soon, uh, with this consultation between the Ministry of Interior and Finance, you know, and so forth. Uh, and so, soon, government will be engaging uh, key stakeholders who are involved in it, and then a national identification system should be in place. We hope, if all goes well, this side of the year. Hopefully between November and December. And I want to tell you that passports are being issued. We have not stopped the issuance of passports. We have terminated the issuance of machine readable passport. But the biometric passport production is ongoing. So any Gambian who wants a passport can get it. Interior Minister Honorable May Fati speaking to GRTS's Agent Silva. First in Nation on GRTS TV this week looks at the Gambia's tourism sector and its impact on the economy. To find out more, join the recording of the program at the Caraba Beach Hotel on Thursday, 12 October at 11 a.m. Officials of the Ministry of Tourism and the Gambia Tourism Board will be there to answer your questions and listen to your concern. Everyone is invited. The Gambia continues its march to attain the global set goals in health. According to the Director of Health Promotion at the Ministry of Health, significant progress is being registered. Louis Mendy reports. Today we are at the regional We have significantly reduced maternal and child mortality. In 2016, we became the first country in Africa to launch the Tobacco Control Act, the Director of Health Promotion, Modun Jai, recounts the recent milestone in health, but said the breakthrough is the government's position in ending open defecation. We've also registered uh, successes in the area of um, open defecation. And today is the talk of the whole world, that the whole world is looking at the Gambia, that we have committed ourselves as a country to end open defecation. In 2014, the Gambia was only 2% in the campaign to end in the practice. Mudinjai said that number has risen to 99% in 2017, meaning the Gambia is only 1% short of the credit. And today we are looking for that 1% where they are located in this, in this country. Um, in that, after that meeting, there was also a meeting in Dhaka. We call it Ngor Declaration. Ngor in, Senegal, in Senegal's language means dignity. And sanitation was tied to dignity. Open defecation is a poor personal hygiene practice associated with warm infections, polio, yellow fever, cholera, and trachoma. In the rains, what happened? The water will collect everything and put it in a strategic location, either in a pond or what we call uh, lakes or whatever. And then you can see in the rains what happened. The children will be playing in these waters. They will be swimming, some will be drinking. And we have what common thing as one common I mean diseases we call the sister somiasis, which as a result you will not know. But as a result when children are going, I mean when people are passing urine, you see broad. And that's what we call the endemic hematuria. And I think this is what we really don't want to happen. And even when they are bathing, they, they sometimes they put on bare foot. And the ankylostoma you talk about now will also come in. The hookworms, you also have the roundworms, the, you know, all those things happen as a result of identification. It is for this reason and others that the practice became a concern for the Gambia government. Uh, we know when we end identification, we are going to significantly cut down the number of diarrheal diseases in this country. We are also going to cut down the number of soil related helminthiasis, for example elements that are all related to soil. Soil means um, mm. excreta. We're also going to improve our environment. And then I think uh, everybody want to see improved child survival and development. The health implications associated with open defecation is also the reason for the need of public toilets. In addition to the Latins, we are also telling them, we also want encourage people to use hand wash, to do practice hand washing. Because if you don't, if you have a latrine, well protected latrine, away from the I mean, water point, away from the kitchen, covered with the right superstructure, water inside, and you don't have soap to wash your hand, it becomes meaningless. Because hand washing with soap and running water 
at the four critical times before eating, before preparing, before preparing food, after cleaning a child that has passed too. This will really help you a lot in improving the health status of the children you are taking and yourself. Open defecation also poses risk to snake bites. Mudunjai said in isolated cases, the practice invites rape to young girls and women. And as governments intensify the fight to ending open defecation, UNICEF and WHO recent report has it that close to a billion people worldwide still defecates outside. Louis Mendy, GRTS. We'll be back with the sports news after this short break. Do stay with us. Are you a youth aged between 15 and 35 years willing to complete a six days intensive training? Do you want to grow your business and increase profitability? The Youth Empowerment Project in collaboration with Empreta Gambia will be organizing a series of entrepreneurship training workshops in the month of October and November 2017 throughout the Gambia. Application forms are now available at the Entrepreneurship Development Center, Bacau, Gaipa House, opposite Comium on Caravan Avenue, and at all regional governor's offices of West Coast Region, LRR, NBR, CRR, and URR. Cancer awareness observed throughout the month of October, Buffalo Medical Center wishes to share some important information for you about breast cancer. Did you know that while all women are at risk of having breast cancer, those with a history in their families and women above the age of 50 are more at risk? Hundreds of thousands of women die every year worldwide from breast cancer. Over 570,000 women died of breast cancer worldwide in 2015 according to the World Health Organization. Many women die from breast cancer because their cases are often detected when their illness is already well advanced and by then it is too late. Mammography is the best way to significantly reduce the incidence of breast cancer related deaths as well as economic burdens on institutions and the government. If you think that you are at risk, visit Bafro Medical Center today for a mammography screening. Your life is in your hands. Welcome back. In sports, after 13 years of struggle in local football, Medina United are finally crowned champions of the Lemon Nawetan football. Medina Bet Prisons FC 2-0 in the finals. Momo de Laminsan reports. United are the new champions of Lamen football after defeating Prisons FC 2-0 to win their first ever league title at the San Diego Memorial Football Field. The grand final, which featured a frantic encounter, produced two first half goals for the winners who looked bright throughout the game. With few minutes into the first half, flying winger Buba Tambiru's cross was headed in by defender Amadou Jaju. The defender fired past his own goalkeeper. Medina extended their lead with Suleiman Seka adding a second goal in the 21st minute. Prison FC had an opportunity to pull a goal back, but Fabakari Bojang's penalty was saved by the goalkeeper. It ended 2-0 in favor of Medina. Uh, it was a big, big pressure. You know, to be silent as a coach and to be given the, uh, you know, the, the mantle and the, the, the total responsibility to change the history of a club. But today I'm happy that this is the second year in Lemeng. Last year we started, we went over the knockout final. And this year we came in through the league final. I think it's a big achievement. Victory for Medina was their first in 12 years. I'm very happy right now, as you can see. The fans are starting. Boys are happy, everybody's happy. We have been yelling for this day since 2004 that we've sent out a final in uh, Lemeng Sunday Garden Memorial Field. And this year in Shia, we have got to up the club and have lifted it. The finals mark the end of a successful tenure for the Lament Tax Force. Efforts have been put together by the committee and concerned people in Lament, and we are ap ap approaching the, uh, the authorities that are important in this all together. And hopefully, um, uh, we hope to secure the, the location for a sports facility, not only a football facility, because it's good enough and big enough to accommodate a sports stadium. The Medina fans celebrated a historic achievement with their players. Reporting for GRT Sports, I am Mudlamin Sane. 
Still on sports, Egypt continues to ride on the euphoria of the country's return to the FIFA World Cup stage. President Abdel Fattah El Sisi has pledged 85,000 US dollars to each player following the country's qualification for next year's tournament. It is uncommon gesture for countries to reward qualification, but the president's move shows just how much this achievement means for the country. Abdel El Mahouri reports. 2-1 victory over Congo Brazzaville has ended Egypt's 27-year wait for a place at football's biggest showpiece. The country's confirmed participation in next year's World Cup was celebrated by all, including Egyptian President Abdel Fattah El Sisi. El Sisi has rewarded each player with one and a half million Egyptian pounds. That's nearly 85,000 US dollars. The gesture simply reflects how valuable the achievement is to Egypt. The president hosted the team on Monday with a special appreciation for coach Hector Cooper and Liverpool winger Mohamed Salah, whose two goals earned Egypt the win. I thank Mohamed, especially because he was the player with the most pressure. In the last four minutes of the game, someone gave him the ball and told him to shoot the penalty kick. Of course, in front of 100 million Egyptians, he was responsible for the ball to enter the goal. And for the match to end peacefully for us, he made us all happy. Thanking him is an appreciation to him and the entire team. Egypt still has one match left in the World Cup qualification against Ghana, but focus has already shifted to preparations for Russia 2018. Almost all of the players in the national team can barely remember when Egypt played in Italy 1990. Some were even born years later. And this new generation will be out to ensure that they can leave a memorable mark in their country's football story. Adel Mahrui, CGTN, Cairo. We will take our second break now. Ah, uh, when I switch lanes, then them doors swing. All my the women screaming money in the thing. Call it automatic bang, bang, bang. Call it automatic bang, bang, bang. No, no, when you go, you need it express. So you hold it first, you need to hold Hello? Come on, babe! Yeah, babe. You've called me like several times. Are you okay? Absolutely nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. I just love the music on your Q-Tune. <laughs> Are you crazy? q sells Q-Tune. Set the mood for your call. Choose dial 127 and choose the song your callers will hear when they fool you. For more information, call 111. q sell Soon you sim. Soon you boss. We innovate or oh, that's follow. That's follow. That's follow. That's follow. That's follow. Do you need no problem. GT Bank introduces Fast Track Service, a brand new way to use your local VAV cards, Visa International and MasterCard. VAV and Visa or MasterCard holders of any domestic bank can walk into our branches and withdraw cash using our POS terminals. There is no longer the need to fill out forms or wait for teleprocessors. Withdrawing cash is now easier with the new GT Bank Fast Track Service. GT Bank Fast Track Service available to even non-customers of the bank who hold a VAV, Visa or MasterCard. It's fast, convenient, reliable, and safe. GT Bank, wouldn't you rather bank with us? Welcome back. In Liberia, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf has urged people to vote peacefully in a nation still recovering from a 14-year civil war. Details in this report. They cast their votes in Tuesday's election. Remember that you are an empowered people. The future of the country is in your hands. No one is entitled to your vote. Not because of party, ethnicity, religion, or tribal affiliation. Your loyalty is to your family, your children, and your children's children, and their children. Vote for the person and persons you believe will make Liberia a better place. It's another chapter in the history of Liberia as she becomes the first democratically elected leader in 73 years 
to hand power over to another elected leader. For the first time in three generations, we will be transferring presidential authority democratically and peacefully from one elected leader to another. There are 20 candidates standing to replace Johnson Sirleaf in the first round. If nobody wins an outright majority, the top two are expected to face each other in a runoff vote in a month. The world will be watching. Let's make them and make ourselves proud. Official provincial results are expected within two days. But the electoral body has until October 25 to issue its final confirmation of the results. Tuli Shabalala, CGTN. Now over two months now operations at Nigeria's main seaport in Lagos have almost ground to a halt. The roads leading to the port are in bad shape and reconstruction on works has been slow. The situation is now taking a serious toll on exporters of agriculture products. CGTN's Deji Batmos reports. Heading to the seaport in Lagos? Then you must be prepared for this. It's the mother of all gridlock in Nigeria and it's on a very important road leading to where the country earns substantial amount of its revenue. The line of trucks and tankers waiting to access the port stretches beyond the eyes can see. Now those trucks and tankers have been here for days and it's not clear for how much longer they are going to be here because from this point to the seaport is about 10 kilometers. That gives you a clearer picture of just how bad the situation is. For drivers like Abdulaziz Abdul Wahab, who's been in the line for the past three days, it's simply a harrowing experience because he still can tell when he would eventually make it to the port. As at, as at me, at the work. Before I used to make at least three trips to the port in a week, but now making just one trip is a tough struggle. Sometimes, even after getting into the port, it could take two whole days to be attended to before you get out. After the one week. And it's not just the drivers who are bearing the brunt of the gridlock. Exporters of agricultural products now say their business is under enormous threat as a result of the situation. Right now, most exporters have their warehouses full of goods, which ordinarily should have been uh, moved uh, to the port. And you know, we're talking about, I mean, we're talking about agricultural export here. I mean, agri products are perishable items which means that over time you find quality deterioration, you find weight uh, reduction, you find value reduction, and also it's becoming a big, big challenge for exporters uh, meeting up with their contractual obligations. The agricultural product exporters now say if the situation is not addressed as quickly as possible, they may be forced to stop buying from farmers as their warehouses and now getting filled to the brim. At some point, exporters might, 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 might stop operation, which means that most of the goods produced by the farmers might rot away in, on the farms. Because there's no, I mean, at some point, you just look at it, what's the point of bringing these goods out to Lagos, to your warehouse, when they cannot be shipped? The basic reason behind the gridlock is bad roads. Reconstruction work is in progress but it is going very slowly. At the rate at which the work is going on, it would take months before the reconstruction is completed. But experts say the long-term solution to the perennial gridlock and congestion at Nigeria's main port is for the government to develop new ports in other parts of the country so as to divert traffic away from its commercial capital. Some have warned that until that happens, traffic gridlock like this is unlikely to disappear from this part of Lagos. CGTN, Lagos, Nigeria. And that brings us to the end of the news. But before we take leave of you, a recap of today's main stories. His Excellency President Adam Abaro has held talks with the visiting Senegalese Foreign Minister Sidike Kaba. More damning revelations regarding cash requests amounting to hundreds of millions of dollars dominated today's proceedings of the Jani Commission. Little known Medina FC has won their first title in Lamen Nawetan after more than a decade of near misses. 
and Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf has urged her people to vote peacefully in Tuesday's general election. Well, that was all in this edition of the news. Thanks for the pleasure of your company and have a very pleasant evening. to your load push yourself to your limit how far can you go think you can handle more you sell so you bundle just got a whole lot bigger now you can get you sell so you bundle in 3 5 8 10 and 13 gigabytes just dial star 303 has and choose your bundle package up to 13 gigabytes you can now buy bundles for another number on the same menu for more information call customer care on 111 you sell so new sim so new bundle so new boss we innovate orders follow at Reliant, being at the forefront in driving financial inclusion, our Women Finance Deposit for Development is dedicated to provide access to finance to women exclusively in the Perry urban and